for the first time on the road north of Tampico, I felt the life slide out of me. A drum in the desert, harder and harder to hear. I was seven. I lay in the car, watching palm trees swirl a sickening pattern past the glass. My stomach was a melon split wide inside my skin. How do you know if you are going to die? I begged my mother. We had been traveling for days. With strange confidence, she answered, when you can no longer make a fist. Woo. Years later, I smile to think of that journey. The borders we must cross separately, stamped with our unanswerable woes. I who did not die, who am still living, still lying in the backseat behind all my questions, clenching and opening one small hand. And this is my response entitled, Hug. How do you know when to call it quits with your old man? A hug was all that I needed, all that you owed me. It was enough to remind me of rushed curtain calls on Sunday afternoons, pretending to be interested in your ridiculous lectures alongside continuous freeway traffic. As we devour plates of the Middle East, Africa, and China within the globe of our own bellies, reminding me that our time is limited, precious. But the time wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to keep me oblivious. It wasn't enough to prevent me from witnessing the transparency of loss. Remembering it vividly at 18, your hug made from chain mail couldn't defend me from the arrow that punctured my heel. Burly, dull-minded man, do not tell me how to love when you are manipulating hundreds of virgin mistresses into sharing a bed with you, promising riches and fortune when in reality you have nothing to give and nothing to loan but late-night absences and so custody. Do not approach a dad-made catastrophe such as myself, because unlike Achilles, I have not fallen. So whenever it comes to mind to think yourself superior, may I remind you that pride is the deadliest of all sins. As I ball up my discord and disdain and toss it over my shoulder like salt for good luck. Now, burning with the energy of a thousand suns, no longer stuttering over my own words, I am looking past to redness, explain how shadows and rage can be obliterated. From 12 to 18 years of age, my small clenched hand has bloomed from the lines that sit in my palm being read as worth it. So listen to me, drop the sly smile. Look into my pupils when you admit your wrongs. Don't look to your sons in blame. Instead, kiss them goodnights and hug them goodbyes. Let down your borders, approach this stage with open arms. Accept my voice for what it is. Embrace my melodic battle cry. If you ever want to be my father again,